Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is from the Depths version 1.655 and this is the first of a series of how-to videos just to help out new players or even some players who didn't even know that some of the options may have been available. Um, this will be a series of short videos for each section of the game uh, going into um, uh, various elements of the screen and the how to build items or the building menus and explaining some of the the blocks as best I understand them and anything that I have personally found out is good ideas bad ideas for building um, this is is initially aimed at beginner players we're getting a lot of new players in who may not quite understand and jump straight into the wrong part of a game um, and don't go through the uh, a better progression through the game um, so I'm going to try and help people through the game at the very beginning we'll then go into some slightly more advanced items later on in the building menus so when you start up the game this would be um, the menu you are um, put up in front of you and in the center we have the basic area that allows you to go into the single player, multiplayer and your options, which we'll go through in a second. Some good bit about release notes, because the game is being regularly updated, it would be a good idea to go in here and just to check to see if something has been mainly, majorly changed. Um, credits and obviously, and the biggest button, the most important button I can, I can suggest people is the forum. Please go on to the... Um, official forums or even the steam discussion there is a lot of good guys on those forums which will be able to help you out with advice on how to play the game and help you with building items or just answer your questions so definitely get yourself registered on the, the, uh, the uh, uh, official forums to get help as quick as possible we'll now go over to the left hand side where you have your experience and level as you start destroying enemy ships, you will get experience points. And this experience, you can see I'm, I'm at 96.9 towards the next level. Um, I'm at level 279 at this moment on this character. You can you know, tell I've been playing it a little while. A little while. Um, as you gain up experience, you get attribute points and item points. So if we go into the character sheet, you can, if we go to buffs on the left hand side, top one, um, this is little buffs that you can um, spend your attribute points on to improve improve overall your um, game mechanics, should we say, and the ability to do certain items. Not all of these have been implemented in the game yet, and um, such as leadership here, you'll see on the right hand side, it says not yet implemented. So as we go down, you can see gunnery not yet implement implemented, sea captain, sky captain is implemented. You can see on the uh, right hand side, it tells you what each point will modify. So if I put a point into this, um, it will give better jet force, wing lift, ailerons, etc. So um, if I put some points in here, you can see the numbers are going up to give me new abilities for this vehicle. Now, how what, what this affects is your vehicles. So um, in this particular um, item, all my balloons, as an example, will get better lift from the balloons. Uh, my helicopter force, anything with rotors, will fly a little bit f um, faster or higher. Uh, tail planes will have a different force now be be aware of one important factor if you build a ship and get lovely balanced with a set of um, uh, buffs in here and then later on change these buffs your vehicle may fly differently so that's just one little factor I've noticed is that uh, people go back to an older ship and then wonder why it doesn't fly the same as it used to or starts crashing and sometimes it could be because they have increased these buffs like I have here so now we've got a balloon lift factor of 1.4 uh, sorry a, a tail fact tail plane factor of 2 now that could be um, tw twice previous um, you know it starts at 1 
So that's double the tailplane and aileron factor. So my vehicle could now start to go out of control. So you have to be a bit aware of that. Or don't change these. Get these up to a, a reasonable level and then don't change them. Um, other bits. Okay, space captain. This affects vehicles that go above the space altitude, which is generally 500 meters. And you can see that it has increased the density, which means that your vehicles can lift higher um, in space once they go above 500 meters. Engineer. This can be a good and important one, especially for people who like lasers or very powerful ships. Uh, it basically increases your engine factors uh, so that you can your engines are more powerful for any number of engine blocks and we'll look at engines in a future video uh, minor in the, the this is for the campaign mode the campaign mode um, you have to re mine resources from certain spots this will increase the amount of points you get from every resource point so in the campaign map this is an important one mechanic Another important one, your character, when it is on a ship, will repair any damage to that ship. So ensuring that this value is high will Im improve your personal damage uh, repair ability of your character. Next, personal attributes. Now, these are not implemented at the moment. These are, as you can see, they would be applying certain factors to your um, um, character but are not at this moment implemented we'll go back to this if ever they do skills um, the important one on here this is now using item points binoculars binoculars are very handy um, and you what when you do um, unlock them you drag them down to this toolbar icon down at the bottom um, so if I just really um, unlock this skill telekinesis telekinesis allows me to flip vehicles around apparently so we will unlock this skill and now if I pull it down here and click on the on the sorry don't pull it down just click on the menu bar that you wish it to be put into it is now on my toolbar so when we are in game I will be able to press on this one two three four number five and have some telekinesis um, on items interesting one uh, but the binoculars which on here is my zero button allows me to zoom in which means I don't have to move my character over to a uh, particular vehicle I can just see it from where I am as such um, and work through it there uh, I just stay where I am and zoom in or zoom out um, to look at the ship in the distance items these are the other items that my character can use you start with the pistol as by default uh, you can add to this certain other items and they cost the item points to unlock the blunderbuss is the next weapon which i haven't bothered with myself smg nice little rapid firing gun the minigun uh, spade which is useful for digging on the, the um, ground the grenade launcher which along with the minigun is potentially the the best personal weapon if you choose to play that the game in that particular faction the paint sprayer allows you to um, basically um, open paint your ships particular colors which will go through in the fleet colors and possibly go through how to do that one there the input assignment tool um, which I haven't used myself but allows you to copy and paste certain values between um, input assignments um, as an advanced technique generally the the starting player shouldn't need to be to look into suicide pill why you would want that don't know but you could unlock it the AI path viewer when you are on a ship you can use this to see how your repair bots will be moving around the ship to repair things this can point out areas they can't get to uh, which we'll look into um, in a more advanced when it comes to repairing your ship um, temperature sensors temperature sensors um, shows how hot your ship is uh, hot parts of your ship are susceptible to infrared missiles so sometimes worth knowing that 
The next bit, this is linked, linked to the paint sprayer, is fleet colours. In the fleet colours you have these different colours which you can paint your ship with um, and they're simply, you select on one of the um, items you want to change, like fleet secondary, and then you can just move your slider to change the colour as you wish um, on these items. Just change it however you, you'd like, any of the various settings. Um, if you don't know these values, try to find a, a paint type of program, um, anything from GIMP or uh, yeah, a Paint Shop Pro or some other Photoshop, some program which when you set a color shows you the decimal RGB values, um, or decimal values for a color. And then you can change these as you need. We'll look into this when it comes to coloring. Your avatar, there is two types of avatar currently in game at this moment the scuttlebot which is the one i use which has got the little propeller on his head and will allow you to um it hovers quite nicely and goes along at a, a fixed level quite nicely um there's not much difference between that the rambot has a jets in his feet instead and jumps quite high but other than that there is very little i haven't seen, noticed any real difference between the, the two uh um, bots other than the look um, unlocks these are from the single player missions in the game and when you go through some of these single player missions you can see the ones I in this um, avatar I have not unlocked yet um, you can it unlocks certain items if you look if I hover over one I'll click on this one on the right hand side it says unlock the huge propeller component for sea vehicles uh, I have done that one. The, if I click on the next one, com uh, unlock the square rig sail and the sailing AI. Um, so that unlocks that particular item, which we'll go into in the build menu. Um, next one unlocks the heat decoy. And finally, unlocks the missile warner and laser defense components. So as you can see, going through these unlocks certain components. I have unlocked them all in a different profile, I use on a different machine. Um, by unlocking them, it makes them selectable in the uh, designer. So, and it's also worth going through all of the single player missions at the beginning as a beginning user. A, you get how to um, maneuver the ships, but also you get some idea of building. The only other bit in the options menu is the flag. You can put a URL into an image that you may want to have to have as a flag for on all of your ships. Okay, so that's your basic menu. We have got one other uh, that most people want. There is down on the, the bottom right hand side, there is this option that says change planet. Now the basic planet we start in, um, if I come up is Netta. Let me just bring up this one here. Is uh, Netta and this has got a lot of options available in these um, on the planet. Now I would personally, uh, if I turn to menu, main menu, this is an advanced area and I wouldn't worry about changing and designing your own planets at the beginning. So we have the planet editor um, and you could this is where you would load a planet that someone may have put up onto the workshop or you wanted to change the planet you're using. The other more important ones for beginning players is the vehicle workshop. By clicking on the vehicle work workshop you can see vehicles that you have or have published on the um, uh, Steam workshop and you can download them or view them in different ways and these are these are all of the subscribed first one is this is all the subscribed ships which you have subscribed to on the steam workshop so if i've um, subscribed to a particular player they would appear here publishing allows me to publish a design to the steam workshop and manage all of those items i would recommend go and have a look at the steam workshop there was a lot of people put a lot of uh, ships up there very good ships good designs if you're having a problem with a particular type of ship definitely 
worth downloading someone who's already built one, have a look at how they've done it, etc. You know, get some ideas from other players. The Planet Workshop is a similar sort of function, but is also um, designed for people who are now designing complete planets um, for use in the campaign map um, on this game. Uh, you can also just click the browse. Um, what this one button basically will take you to the Steam Workshop itself for the game, and you would subscribe there. It's not an in-game menu. You need to go to the Steam Workshop out of game and have a look at it in there, and then subscribe to a particular vehicle or person, and it will then appear in the Vehicle Workshop. So that's those all the basic buttons. So next, um, we'll go into the single player, which is where I would suggest um, you go to. Uh, we have options. Options is um, self-explanatory. We'll go through some of those options in-game to show um, what they actually affect. So single player is the first part. Now here, people tend to go straight for the campaign mode. I would recommend that the first thing you need to do is go to the vehicle designer and learn how to cre create um, vehicles, which we will do in the next video. Um, the others, once you have learned to do the vehicles, you can then go and do the story missions, which as you can see is for each of the um, areas, has a few mission missions associated with them, which will potentially go through these just to show how to, these missions work and how to get through them. Um, so that would be the, the next stage I would recommend. And then finally go into the campaign. Um, in the vehicle designer itself, there is a number of um, designers that it can take you to. The vanilla is the basic original designer. And for most cases, and uh, if throughout this series, I will be using the vanilla designer unless I specifically say that I'm using the space designer. The difference between the designers uh, between these two is it starts you up on a platform really high, uh, whereas this one starts you at water level. And this is purely so you can design ships which are in space rather than having to launch them up there in the first place. The Four Seasons Missile Test Facility. We'll po probably take a little walk around that, but I would recommend having a look at this area. It gives you some very good ideas on how to build missile systems. And the benchmarker is, um, as, as much as anything, knowing that you can press F4 whilst in game, and it tells you how your game is performing. So we'll go back to the menu here, and we'll go back to the main menu. So just hitting the back button takes you all the way back to the main menu. Okay, so that is the basic interface for From the Depths. Uh, we will next go into how to use the build menus and generally how to build sh uh, vehicles in From the Depths. Hopefully this has been useful. Leave any comments below or anything you feel I've got wrong. And um, see you in game. And until next time, have fun.